Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be giving some love to our Predator 420 that is mounted on this Manco Intruder 2 go-kart. As you've seen in the uh, previous video, if you have not seen the video of me riding this go-kart, go check it out. Um, it is still, the Predator on this thing is, is its bone stock. I did not do anything to it. Governor's still in it. Stock header, or excuse me, stock exhaust, stock intake. So I want to give it a little bit of love, like I said. So I went ahead and I ordered from GoPowerSports.com a Stage 1 kit. And you'll see what comes in that kit here. If you're not familiar with that here in a minute when we unbox it. And while the engine is out and on the bench, I'm going to go ahead and open it up and remove the governor so we can get a little bit of RPMs out of that engine. All right, let's see what's in this box. Go ahead and open it. hope there's stickers in here. All right. Of course we've got bubble wrap. We'll play with that later. Receipt. I will save that for my records. And yes, Go Power Sports never fails. Thank you for the stickers, guys. All right. So what I notice in this box, first and foremost, is the header. All right, nice little header right there. Awesome, and put that to the side. Um, they gave me the option to order an exhaust gasket and and some uh, uh, filters, I guess you'll call them, uh, just to take place of. Uh, the vents that are on the gas tank and um, that are going into the uh, um, valve cover. Um, carb jet is also in here, and I think I said before, um, uh, exhaust gasket. And I also, they asked if I wanted some zip ties. Why not? You can never have enough zip ties. So there's that bag. Got this little box right here. Go ahead and open that. All right, I believe that this right here is the uh, choke adapter. So we'll, uh, you'll see how that uh, works later. This is a really, really cool adapter. I mean, I've seen some really cheapy kind of adapters, but this is really, really cool and really nicely made too. As you can see, it says GPS for Go Power Sports. That's awesome, very, very cool. And, this must be the filter. There is nothing else in that box. This is the last little bit. All right. And we got our filter. I ordered red so I can match the go-kart. And also comes with a uh, clamp on there too, a little hose clamp. All right, now I got all the stuff unboxed and uh, everything's in great shape. I'm really happy with all this. I mean, this stuff is just super cool. So uh, I'll go ahead and get that engine out now and uh, get the engine on the bench and we'll go ahead and we'll start tearing into it. All right, that engine's out. That's what it looks like, our engine plate. I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is how we uh, brace the engine plate. Weld another bar right there and right in the middle just for some extra, extra strength on there. I'm glad we did. So, uh, engine is now on the bench and uh, we're gonna go ahead and take that torque converter off first and foremost and then take the uh, side cover of the engine off and uh, start removing the governor the torque converter comes off just like the torque converter went on and if you want to see a detailed video on how I in installed this torque converter this uh, 40 series torque converter on the 420 I will put the link in the description to a video I did and it'll show you how to install one of these First thing you want to do is take off that bolt right there for the pulley that goes onto the crank using my DeWalt gun to break it loose. And what I didn't show you was taking the belt off. That video shows it as well. Now that pulley just slides off, as well as the spacers. Now the last thing to do to remove this torque converter is to take off the four bolts that are going through the plate and are threading into the engine side cover. 
once all the bolts are removed, that torque converter plate just slides right off of there. The first thing that I want to do before I take the engine side cover off or the crankcase cover off is I want to go ahead and drain the oil that's out of there. I went ahead and took the filler plug out and now I'm going ahead and taking the drain bolt out and I'm going to drain the oil in this uh, pan here and we'll put fresh oil in it when we are putting the engine all back together. And this is the original oil. I have not changed it yet since the engine was brand new. All right, got the uh, oil drained. Now that the oil is drained out of it, we can go ahead and uh, take this uh, side cover off now. And then uh, that should have us uh, access the governor wheel. Really simple to remove this uh, side cover on these Predators. I have my uh, 10 millimeter socket uh, attached to my uh, cordless impact gun here. And I'm going ahead and I'm removing these bolts. Now that all the bolts are removed, that side cover just comes right out. Now we can get a good look at that governor wheel right there. And we can also get a good look inside of the engine itself. All right, that was pretty easy. Got this case off. And right there's the uh, governor wheel or governor gear, I guess you call it. What you got to do is take that out. And then also this governor arm right here, you want to remove or cut. I think I'm going to cut it. Yeah, kind of lame, but I think I am going to cut it. I decided to cut the plastic governor wheel with just a pair of cutters, and that seemed to work out pretty well. You can see here I'm basically cutting notches so that center pin can slide out easy and I can move those weights out of the way. Now before that actual plastic wheel can be removed, there's like a little small retaining ring that goes around that pin that's in there. Now before you take that out, there's going to be a little cap over that uh, C-clip so you can't really see it. I'm just going to go ahead and use a pick right there and hopefully this pick will be able to be enough to release this clip. That clip goes flying, so be super careful with that clip. Um, I don't have safety glasses on. Uh, that was pretty dumb, so please wear safety glasses. And then this wheel should come out. I think there's a washer or something right down here. Oh, yep. Yeah. Take that out. A little small washer. All right, it's day two with uh, this 420 on my bench. Um, I took the uh, timing cover, I guess you call it, or engine side cover to work and got it nice and clean. Got the gasket material off it, off of the uh, case and, um, and put it through our little parts washer at work and, and uh, cleaned it off real nice. Um, so the goal for tonight is that governor arm that's right there, I really don't want to. I really don't want to, but I'm gonna cut that. Um, the reason why I don't want to is angle grinder around these engine components really, really doesn't uh, get me excited. But uh, I, I'm gonna give it a shot. I figure if I am able to grind it a little bit and then maybe wiggle it with pliers, it might come out. Um, I gotta get this uh, the bearings and, and the gears and stuff covered with a paper towel. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that now and then we'll get to cutting. Well, lesson learned for next time. When I was redoing the throttle, I actually ended up removing this governor arm. Well, next time I put one of these together, I know to pull that thing out of there and how easy it is instead of cutting it in the engine block. That actually went pretty freaking smoothly. That's what's left of it right there. Kind of put that, like I said, that paper towel to kind of block everything. But that'll just sit just like that, and I'm okay with it. Um, I'm just going to make sure that there's no uh, debris on the end of that that's going to fall into the gears. But um, I'm liking it. So uh, on to the next step.
I decided before I put it back together that I wanted to go ahead and take the exhaust manifold off. And the stock exhaust manifold on these Predators are held on by two nuts. Once those two nuts are removed, then the exhaust manifold comes off. The gas tank is off because I'm going to be doing some work on the throttle, which I'll show you a little bit later. I also took the stock air cleaner off as well. All right, this engine's ready to go back together. Um, one thing that you uh, want to make sure before you put the uh, cover back on is make sure that your timing marks are lined up right there on the cam, right there on the crank. Make sure this cam is set back where it needs to be, just like that. Double check your marks. Marks look good. There's also a mark on the balance shaft too if you are planning on keeping the balance shaft, which in my engine I am. So I don't have a gasket for this. So what I'm going to use is Toyota Seal Packing 103 or FIPG. Um, you don't have to use that exact stuff. Uh, your local auto parts store will have something um, that you'd be able to uh, seal it back up with. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get this sealed and we're going to go ahead and get this uh, side cover back on. And that's what it looks like right there. Put it all along the uh, gasket mating surface. Now we can go ahead and get this back on the engine. All right, that is back together. All these bolts are tightened. You don't want to uh, over tighten them. I just used this 3 8 ratchet. It's 10 millimeter and uh, just got them kind of snug and then cranked them down just a little bit more. So as you can see, it's kind of oozing out the sides. That's kind of what I want to see when I do like an oil pan gasket or timing cover, um, that sort of thing. So that's exactly what I'm seeing pretty much all the way around. So we're going to wait for that to dry, um, but I think it's going to be a good time to uh, test fit this header. So this just slides on here, just like that, and that's how it goes on. That looks pretty darn good. I like that. So we're going to wait until that uh, RTV uh, dries up, and then um, we can turn this engine around and we can do the, um, the uh, uh, intake carb jet, that sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and bolt this down right now and uh, we'll move on to the other side. What I've been working on is this throttle right here. Um, I've made that little mechanism right there that uh, go, th that was the uh, old rod for the uh, throttle and I just kind of modified it, put some heat on it and drilled a hole in that arm and it should work as a throttle. Um, I just need to go to the hardware store and get a uh, good return spring for it, and that's basically what it needs. Uh, another snag that I ran into on this exhaust port here, um, it has these studs that are on there. I need to get that nut off of there. That's how I got it on there. I double nutted it. But um, these, uh, n these studs, when you put the new exhaust on there, those studs are way too long, so I need to go to the hardware store and get some bolts that are the same thread pitch, and uh, I'll, I'll be able to make that exhaust work. Um, one other thing that I still need to do is do the air filter adapter and the carb jet, which I am going to do right now. I went ahead and decided to do the carb jet first and foremost. 10 millimeter box end wrench, and you pop the uh, carburetor bowl loose, and I got a bucket right there, so when I go ahead and unthread the uh, bolt that goes through the bowl, I won't get gas all over my workbench. And now the carburetor bowl can be removed from the carburetor. Now that the bowl is removed, we can go ahead and put our flat blade screwdriver in that carburetor, and we can get that stock carb jet out of there. And with a little bit of finesse, that stock carb jet just threads out of the carburetor. And that's what the stock carb jet looks like when it is threaded out of the carburetor. The new carb jet threads in exactly like the old one threaded out. And when you get to the top and get ready to tighten it, just make sure that you just give it a little bit of tightness on there. You don't need to run it home because that is brass. The O-ring that went on the carburetor seemed to still be in good shape, so I just decided to reuse it. I 
And now we can go ahead and tighten the carburetor bowl back up. And like I said before, on these bolts, you don't really need to run them home. Just make them snug. And now it's time for that air filter adapter that I showed you earlier to be tightened up to the carburetor. And once that hose clamp is on that filter, we can go ahead and slide it on there and tighten that hose clamp down. All right, we are almost done with this uh, stage one kit. Um, let me show you kind of what I've been doing. Um, went to the hardware store, got that return spring, actuates the throttle and returns the throttle perfectly. And I got these uh, Allen bolts right here with uh, some lock washers on them so they could uh, hold the uh, new header pipe on. So what we're doing now is installing the uh, filters that were provided with the kit as well. Um, got like an emissions box here um, that we're going to go ahead and remove. And then after that, I think we're ready for a test start. We'll see what happens. And now that those two filters are on and that emission box is removed, I think it's time to start this thing up and see what happens. that thing ran great. I am super uh, happy with how it sounds. Uh, I think I'm going to have to get a muffler for that um, on the end of this exhaust because it might be just because I'm in the garage, but man, is that loud. It is really, really loud. And the neighbors are probably not going to like me so much. But now what we're going to do is we're going to get that engine back on the cart.